Not only that, that they had to have instruments right. so advanced right. that they could tell longitude, we're going to show you that in a little while, and latitudes right. that were not discovered by Europeans until the 18th century, 1700. In 1800, and we couldn't, they couldn't draw as accurate maps as these ancient maps until the 19th and 20th century. Right. So, it gives you an idea and, um, of how much knowledge the world has lost. And we, as the sons and daughters of those who drew those maps, have now to go back to try to rediscover and appreciate. And I believe that if we apply ourselves, we all still have the gray matter, the brains that can recapture what they invented because again they did the work not only from inter an intellectual standpoint but it has a connection with the spiritual right because the advanced sciences of our ancestors was always connected to the metaphysical part of it thank you so that they could elevate it to a level that you know, white folks were never been, have never been able to understand. Right. And uh, just before I introduce you to this, let me read with a little uh, caption on the back of the book. It says, Charles Hapgood's classic 1966 book on ancient maps is back in print after 20 years. First published in 1966. I never heard of it growing up. I never heard of it going to school, to colleges, to universities, to graduate school. Mm -hmm. Only when I'm doing research about trying to find out what other things are my, my ancestors created besides just the history, then I discovered and it was just republished after 20 years. Mm -hmm. Hapgood produces concrete evidence of an advanced worldwide civilization existing many thousands of years before ancient Egypt. Mm. Mm. And when they say ancient Egypt, I mean, uh, they mean, and I mean, uh, dynastic right. Egypt. He has found the evidence in many beautiful maps long known to scholars, the peri Reis map that shows on Antarctica the Hajj Ahmed map, the Orientus Phineas, and other amazing maps. Hapgood concluded that these maps were made from more ancient maps from the various ancient archives around the world. Now lost. Hapgood also concluded that the ancient map makers were in some ways much more advanced scientifically than 16th century Europe. I was arguing with a Senegalese brother yesterday. I spoke uh, at the Schomburg uh, on Sheikh Anta Diop's uh, uh, commemoration day. And uh, he was saying, well, Africans, we didn't invent philosophy or anything. It came from Europeans. What? <laughs> in the, in the, you know, in the 16th century. He said that, you know, Europeans invented that. So I told him, I said, well, you know why you're saying that? Because your mind is European. Yeah. Well, no, I have a PhD, in, a doctorate degree in philosophy. I said, yes, white philosophy. That's right. Thank you. White philosophy, that's what you have PhD in. And they have told you that your people didn't invent anything, so you come here, you want to tell us. I said, you talk to me, I'm going to show you the evidence. I asked him, have you ever heard of George G.M. James? He said, no. <laughs> That's an explanation right there. Right. Okay. 16th century Europe. So, so these maps 
the, the scientifically, this civilization were more advanced than Europe in the 1500s. Right. This is 2004. 1500s. The ancient, uh, uh, the ancient civilization, in other words, what he says was that uh, the ancient map makers were in some ways much more advanced scientifically than 16th century Europe, the ancient civilizations of Greece, uh, Egypt, in other words, a dynastic Egypt, or Babylonia. Not only were these unknown people more advanced in map making than any people prior to the 18th century, it appears they mapped all the continents. The Americas were mapped thousands of years before Columbus. Antarctica was mapped when its coasts were free of ice. There is evidence that these people must have lived when the ice age had not yet ended in the northern hemisphere and when Alaska was still connected with Siberia by the Pleistocene Ice Age land bridge. When Alaska was connected to Siberia. We, we, we are, I have a map that, that, to start right there, this is Europe here, right? This is the United States. This is Alaska. Well, I yeah, know the, the screen, it, it, uh, I'm gonna show you on, 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 uh, on one of the, uh, the thing I have here. But you see this part over here? of Russia, mm -hmm. because the, the, the earth is round, this part of Russia, there is a water there, there is a break between uh, uh, this part of Russia and Canada, where it is, when it is hooked up. But these, in, on these ancient maps, Russia over here was hooked up to the, to the Americas, to Canada. That's what uh, the evidence shows. And this period, you have to go back way before anything recorded or mapped by the modern world. So that's what these maps are showing. So let me just introduce you to some of the information on, uh, on the maps of the ancient sea kings. Now, as you heard, it says that the people who invented or who, who mapped the world uh, must have lived before even, they say, Egypt, meaning ancient Egypt. Right. Which means that we have to go before the first dynasty. Now, um, this is the map that start, they started all. That started this thing. Can you push it up just a little? Can where I push it goes it? up the, uh, right, where it goes up instead of going down. Okay. Okay. Like right that? Yeah. They, what, this is, this is the whole thing that started everything. If you have no, scientific interest or anything, you see something like this, you say, what is this? You throw it away. And of course, it doesn't mean anything to you right now as you're looking at it. But this is what started the whole thing. It was discovered first in 1929. This little map here was is the, the Paris Reese or Rice map of 1513. It was written in 1513. It was discovered in 1929, and I, I'm, not gonna go in, I'm, I'm not going into the details, but I just want to give you an introduction so you know what we are dealing with. 1929, uh, in, in Turkey. Everybody knows where Turkey is? Yes. Yeah. Um, and it belonged to a Turkish admiral by the name of Piri, Reese or Rice, 
And when they discovered it, 